All right, we got another book of Proverbs coming up, another chapter of Proverbs. So we got a few more left. Uh, I think about five. We're on chat. We're on uh, chapter twenty-seven of the book of Proverbs. And if you guys don't already know, um, I know I have a lot of new subscribers. I have playlists for this stuff. I'm doing. I already did the book of Revelation. Uh, I'm doing. I did just finished small books of the Bible. I'm about to wrap up Proverbs chapter by chapter. And basically, all it is. I did small books of the Bible too. Uh, all it is is, and I'm doing parables. I'm just reading through minimal commentary. What we're do, basically doing is we're reading through, and anything that jumps out, quick, you know, analogy or it, what it applies to in life, and then we're moving on. But churches have given up on reading this as as um, a habit. Uh, you just very very rarely will you hear proverbs being mentioned, and I think that's unfortunate. Um, there are many people doing it. I think the only other person I've heard doing it is J.D. Farrakh. Uh, Chuck Missler does it. Um, there's just a few people, uh, but there's a lot of cool stuff in here. And when we read it over and over again, like once a month, or get yourself on a schedule, and when you're reading them, you'll always see something new, and it's amazing. And what's funny is, is that Proverbs 27, there's a couple of quotes in here that have been used recently in the body. So I find that interesting that I'm at Proverbs 27, and some of this has been used. So let's read through and let's see what jumps out at us. We're starting in verse number one. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. That's interesting. That's good. Don't make plans. Don't make concrete plans. Don't get too caught up in what's coming. This has actually has a lot of meaning to it. Don't get too caught up in what's coming. Deal with what's happening today. And we, we here lately that this applies to here lately we've really been caught up in the rapture. And it's exciting, and it's amazing, and it's you can't help but think about it. But we can go too far with that, and we saw that this year, May 14th, um, a little bit in June, July. You know, a lot of people were getting into dates and stuff like that, and it really caused a lot of problems. And I'm starting a little bit to see it again here for Christmas. But on the upside of that is a lot of people have been seeing stuff about this time of year, as it relates to the rapture. So who knows? We might go. But what we want to make sure we do is that's not our focus is to look for that, the look for the date. We, we always watch for the rapture. That's not our focus. Our focus is today, and we need to deal with what's going on right now because this is where salvation is. Today is the day of salvation. Um, that will t Tomorrow will take care of itself. But we keep, our, we keep you know, a weather eye out for anything that may jump up at us. So that actually, that one right there, verse 1, applies pretty well. Verse 2, let another man praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. Um, a lot of pride comes out of you praising yourself. I try not to. I know I do sometimes, but I try not to. I'm not perfect. Uh, a stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. Um, this, Ironically, this is stuff we've been talking about. This applies to things we've been talking about. There's a lot of issues going on right now in the in the body, in and out the body. Some of them are not in the body. Um, a lot of doctrinal issues, and it's creating a sense of of hatred between people. I can't say brothers and sisters because not all those people are saved. Uh, some of them are coming from a place of very evil intentions, and we have to discern which ones are which. But it it is a fool's wrath is heavier. It's very heavy and. That's one of the reasons, another another reason, why I don't get into long, lengthy discussions anymore about that stuff. Leave them alone. They're, they've created their own issue. Verse 4, wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? True. True. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Verse 5, open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. This has been used a bunch. And it's true. And it applies to what we've been doing. We are doing some open rebukes on people. The Bible tells us to do this. Now a lot of people are getting upset about that. Well, that's fine. You can get upset. But don't get mad when we do what the Bible is telling us to do. The Bible talks about this stuff. And it is better. When it's warranted. Now it's not always warranted. When it's warranted, we do an open rebuke. We deal with the problem, deal with the issue at hand. Because if we don't and we let it go, we're just as guilty as the people doing it if we don't say something. That's guilt by association. I'm not going to be, 
I'm not going to be guilty if I can help it. If I see something that's wrong, let's deal with it. Because if we deal with it out of the open, we turn the lights on, everybody sees what the problem is. Like uh, a... Uh, trying to find something to use as an example. Well, like you're walking in the woods at night. I have really good night vision. I can see just fine. But I know other people don't have good night vision. Turn the flashlight on so they can see where they're going. You light the path. Um, if we don't, if we don't turn the lights on and point these things out, people will trip and fall and they can be destroyed. And like I said, if we don't say something, we're just as guilty. Verse 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. That's the truth. Because a friend does it out of love. Like you get ready, you're about to fall, they grab you and it hurts. It's because they were trying to save you. And they may say things that'll hurt you, but if they're doing it, if it's saving your life, it, it was. it's better to have that. Because the enemy kisses you and then walks away and lets you die. <laughs> Verse 7, a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Every time I see your shirt, I think that, think of a safety meeting. The bright color. So a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Well, when you're hungry, you're hungry. You'll take whatever you want. Um, this can actually point to um, there's two mentions in the Bible that I know of, there may be more where the, somebody was told to take this book and eat it, and it's going to taste like honey, it's going to be sweet on your tongue but it'll be bitter in your belly I, I, this to me kind of leads to that, if you're hungry for the word, if you're hungry for the gospel you're going to eat the word it's bitter, because <clears throat> I mean it's sweet, it tastes sweet but it's bitter because there's a lot of truth in there. Um, I was talking to Watchwoman65 earlier, and I told her, I was like, truth is like a Granny Smith apple. It's bitter, sometimes sour, but after you eat it, it's satisfying. Maybe hard getting it down, because I've had some really bad ones, but it's satisfying. And even though truth hurts, even though sometimes truth is it's very bitter, it's very hard to eat, it's a tough pill to swallow, in the end, it's better for you. Verse 8. Like a bird that wanders from its nest is a man who wanders from his place. Know what your place is. A lot of people claim authority in the world that they shouldn't have. You see this a lot in the army. And you, this is why uh, I've, I've said over and over again, you need to know who you are. And know who you are in Christ. <clears throat> verse 9 ointment and perfume delight the heart and the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend nor go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away I think that's saying keep your friends at arm, arm's length and keep your family even further <laughs> I may be wrong on that one. Verse 11. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. Be wise and make my heart glad. That's, that's God talking to his children. Because, no, it could be that I may answer him who reproaches me. Because Satan is always trying to accuse the, the brethren to God. And God has an answer to them if they're walking in righteousness or in, in faith. So he's telling them, hey, you guys be wise. Make my heart glad. That way when he comes and starts accusing you, I got a good answer for it. Like, like Job. Remember the conversation God and Satan had about Job? That's what that sounds like that's, that's applying to. Verse 12, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The simple pass on and are punished. This is important. This is what's referred to commonly, I think, as foresight. When you see danger approaching and you're like, hmm, I think I better do something different. Um, an old trick 
we used to use if we if you didn't have your pistol with you or didn't have your concealed carrier on your hip and you saw a group of people walking across a parking lot in the dark just a second please okay I'm back <laughs> telemarketer don't want to talk to you um, you you look and you see or the, the the parking lot you see a bunch of guys walking out and what they'll do is they'll be walking in a group with each other and when they see you they spread out and the one thing they try to do is one or two of them will keep your attention and the rest get behind you It's an old trick I don't let people do that I back up and go uh uh, uh go around the front and they want to fight with anybody nope you're not walking behind me I know this trick and what we would do is if you had like a cell phone or something like that you get, or something you could clip pull your shirt up and tuck it down like you've got a pistol on there and immediately they change their direction you you foresee that there could be a problem and you react accordingly you present yourself as not an easy target carry your keys in such a way so if you need them as a weapon you can do them as a weapon these are simple things this is these are things about being prudent if you see a famine coming you lay up food for that stuff Verse 13, take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress. Verse 14, he who blesses his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it will be counted a curse to him. <laughs> you come around yelling too early in the morning. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. They're annoying. Whoever restrains her restrains the wind and grasps the oil with his right hand. You can't do it. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the continents of his friend. This one's been used a bunch. And it is good. Fellowship, this is what fellowship is. Fellowship is good because we sharpen each other's understanding. We help each other. We, 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 we put all our our misconceptions aside we are able to help each other understand and bless each other because we each see a different perspective whoever keeps a fig tree will eat its fruit so he who waits on his master will be honored that's actually in a parable we're going to cover on the parable playlist as in water face reflects face so a man's heart reveals the man that's very interesting. So when you look in the water, you see your face back at you. It's a perfect image, a perfect copy. A man's heart shows what's in the man. Now remember the video I just did real quick where I was showing content on other channels compared to mine? What's in a person's heart will come out in their videos. What are they trying to share with you? What are they trying to teach you? What is their main focus? Is it making other people look bad? Is it hatred? Or is it doctrine? Is it gospel? Are we trying to learn something? I've done a bunch of videos talking about these people, but I put a bunch of scripture in them too. And now we're back on track and we're covering what we were covering before. But what's in your heart will manifest outside of you. You can't hide it forever. Everybody tells on themselves. Verse 20, hell and destruction are never full so the eyes of man are never satisfied. And that's the truth. When you look with flesh eyes, you, you, you lust with the flesh. Um, the eyes lie to you. You have to look with spirit eyes. You have to look with your heart. Um, you see a much different world when you do that. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. And a man is valued by what others say of him. Integrity. It's about integrity. I've had people before in my life, several people, many people, say, I don't like you, but I respect you because you are the same way all the time. You're not one way this day and then one way this day. I may not care for you, but I have respect for you because you're reliable. I know what I'm going to get from you. Other people, I don't. And they've said it in front of other people, telling them, you guys, I can't rely on you. I don't know what to expect from you. This guy, I know what to expect from him. Don't like him, but I respect him. And I'd rather have somebody's respect. Because if they know, if we may not get along, but if they know that I can rely on me to be truthful with them and to be honest with them, that's, that's integrity. And that's what verse 21 is talking about. 
Though you grind a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with crushed grain, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. So there's no matter, this goes along with what we've been doing, why we rebuke, why we block. You can run that fool through the grinder, through the meat grinder. You can beat him up and, and tie him down and, and whatever you want to him. You will not chase his foolishness away from him. He'll still be a fool. And so you have to make a judgment call, and that's what we do. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. This is why I block those comments in my comment section. As best I can, I try to keep it under control. I don't want you guys to have to endure that while you're here watching videos. You should be able to comment and fellowship with your brothers and sisters in the comment section without being harassed nonstop by dumb people. And that's why I do that. I don't want you guys to have to endure that. I care about you guys. I care about your experience when you're here on my channel. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. It's true. There's actually, there's one crown that does endure, but it's not ours. <coughs> when the hay is removed and the tender grass shows itself and the herbs of the mountainside are gathered in, the lambs will provide your clothing and the goats the price of a field. Let's see. When the hay is removed, You go out and work and earn your wage, and you'll be provided with everything you need. And verse 27, you shall have enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household, and the nourishment of your maidservants. That tie, all three of those tie together. So you go out there, and you get the hay cut down, the tender grass comes up. Anybody that's ever grown hay knows that. You go gather the herbs of the mountain. You do all that work. Get everything together. And you go feed your lambs and feed your goats. The lambs will provide you wool for your clothing. And the goats, you can sell them. Because usually they used them for meat or they would use, they find the good, get the good ones for the temple. And um, you sell them for uh, to go buy more field, go buy bigger fields. And you shall have enough goat's milk for your food for the food of your household and the nourishment of your razor. So that's Proverbs 27. Lots of good stuff. Lots of little things in here. And we have a commentary over here, Hardy Council. The key word in this paragraph is friends. Friends, according to the original sense of the Hebrew word, are those who delight in each other's companionship. Well, hey, that's actually pretty cool. Either they are useful to each other because the one possesses gifts that the other lacks, or they have certain tastes in common. It is in friendship that we get to know ourselves as a man sees his face in the mirror of calm water. We unfold to each other. Our friend elicits traits of which we are hardly aware. Our sympathy and tenderness are drawn forth by our friend's troubles as our laughter flashes out to awaken or to answer his high spirits. We shudder to think what cold and undeveloped things we should be without. Uh, we should be without the sharpening of friendship. Hold on, let me read that again. We shudder to think what cold and undeveloped beings we should be without the sharpening of friendship. Yeah, when somebody stays all by them, it's good to stay by yourself for a season, but it's not good to stay that way all the time. How sweet human friendships are. Why not find equal confidence and sweetness in the greatest friend of all? Who's that? Jesus. Of course there is a friendship, which is wholly hypocritical and worthless. Such a friendship is marked by a loud and ostentatious demonstration. See Proverbs 27, 14. Ponder Christ's offer in John 15, 14 and 15. Those verses are, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. We are his friends because we know what the word says. We can read it, and we see it, and we believe in him, and we put our faith and trust in him. Okay, guys, that's Proverbs 27. Do your own reading on that. See what you find. See what it says to you. See what it speaks to you. And I love you guys, and I'll bless y'all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.